we blocked out the shoot dates, we blocked out the post-production. This is before we even started writing any of the screenplay. So we'd already had a whole plan in place. What were the steps you went through from being an actor to becoming now a storyteller slash screenwriter? What changed? Did anything really change? A lot has changed. Um, and I'd say for the better, um, as I felt, what's the word? Just being an actor, I never felt very secure because I felt, as I said earlier, always at the mercy of opportunities coming to me and being cast. Whereas, um, you know, writing a screenplay and being a director, you're taking control of your career. Um, and it was really hard to get there, but um, I just really knew that the story that I wanted to get behind was something that should be out there. And um, it was very challenging getting the investors and the putting it all together because I wore many hats in this one. I was a producer, director, writer, actor. I even made lunch at times. I was even a gaffer when I had to be. You know, I did everything. I even cleaned the toilets when they backed up. I was, I mean, literally I did it all. Um, but I just felt that you know, it was my first project and, you know, not people weren't making that much money. So whatever I could do to make it better for everyone, I did. Um, I believe we're all equal on a film set. You know, the, run, the runner, there's no, no different. I would listen to them all. And I think that I tried to create a very, like, comfortable, happy environment where people could shine in any, everything they were doing. Every, I wanted every department to shine. And I, it was quite hard for me at first to navigate that because I didn't necessarily know what every department was supposed to be doing. So I had to kind of learn very quickly because you need the, the ship to be seamless. You need to run it and you need to know what everyone's doing. So that kind of took me a little time to figure out. I'm still figuring that out because it's very detailed. And um, But I, I think that having respect for everyone and like really letting them do their job is important. So having the knowledge of being an actor and being on sets for so many years as an actor, as a dancer, you know, I, I kind of was always watching, as, as I said before, I'm a very inquisitive person. So I was always, even when I was acting or dancing on sets, I was always interested in what everyone was doing. Um, and then when you're a director, it's your job to know what everyone's doing. Because if someone's not doing their job properly, you need to make sure they are. So um, it's a difficult role sometimes because you're, you know, uh, you'll sometimes have people that have different opinions, um, but at the end of the day, it's your vision and you need to come from a place of love and may express that. Um, and that's one thing else I've, I've learned how to express from your heart rather than say, this is wrong. If you can really inspire with your word, it's going to be so much better. Right. And especially when you're in a high pressure situation, like you have to make your day and you only have so many days left and certain pages of the script haven't been covered and things like that. I'm sure it's, it's, it's harder to come from your heart in those moments, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> what makes your writing process different than others? Having a background in um, dancing and um, performing, having that kind of uh, detailed um, regime where you're literally in the studio. As a dancer, you're in the studio at 8 a.m. You're leaving at 8 p.m. It's a really hard schedule. So I always knew what you had to have a work ethic to be a dancer or be a professional performer. You can't just phone it in. So I kind of applied that to, to when I became, when I started my endeavors as a writer, I made sure I took it really seriously. I blocked off, you know, th two or three months, five days a week. I treated it like a job. If you treat it like a job, it's a job. I, I didn't treat it like a hobby. I, I knew. Um, with the Shuru process, I actually speak to a, a, a life coach. So before we even, I just, I told her the whole thing and she said, well, how are you gonna make this movie? So we actually planned the whole year um, from, we blocked out how long it would take to write the script. We blocked out time to raise investment. We blocked out the pre-production. We blocked out the shoot dates. We blocked out the post-production. This is before we even started writing any of the screenplay. So we'd already had a whole plan in place. So, and then we actually stuck to it and literally everything happened. And if it hadn't, if we, I think having that full plan 
um, really helped stick to a schedule. Because otherwise you could be writing a script for a year and then you know how long is a piece of string and then it's just one of these things that's just a never ending thing. So I think having an end goal and having a real schedule, having a plan, then you can execute the plan, you can hold yourself accountable to the plan. Um, and I think I, mean, I treat that with everything I do, I try and have a whole game plan in place of how I'm gonna do it. So you had a life coach help you plan out a film about not so much life coaches, but gurus. Um, interesting. That's fascinating. My life coach, in fact, um, is an amazing woman, Sarah Alexander, who in fact is a story consultant on the Shuru process because oh, she's been to a lot of the retreats and she has first-hand experience with the subject matter. So she was actually very, very helpful in me creating the beats to the screenplay before writing the screenplay. She helped me understand the types of characters that would go there, why they would go there. And she actually experienced a lot of the things that occurred over the weekend. So yeah, it was really helpful having a consultant that really knew the world more than I did. Um, and then she helped me just really stay on track. Um, and I think, you know, it's having a real plan will make it so much easier to navigate. If you don't really have a plan, then it's harder to kind of, you know, know where you're at. So I think whatever project you do, it's really good to have like an idea of how you're gonna execute it and who you wanna involve yourself with and the timeline of how to, how to do it. Did she give you homework and say, when you come back to me, we need to have this done? She gives me a lot of homework actually. And it's really challenging talking to her because she really pushes me. She, you know, every, we, we speak once a week, we still actually, we still work together. We're working together. Right now we're working on some other projects. Um, and uh, it's exhausting. She really pushes me. Um, she asks me questions that I have like a very in depth, profound things that I hadn't really thought about and challenges me to like understand the purpose of why people should be watching this and why I should be telling this story. Um, and it's been really helpful. I think everyone should have someone, whether it's a life coach or, or someone that can, that can believe in them, inspire them, also push them. It's great to have that figure in your life, I think. Right, and so you would come back with completed pages and would you actually review them with her? Um, so she lives in the UK um, and it was funny. So we'd been working together for four years. We actually did Trophy Boy together. Um, She's actually been one of the most instrumental people in my becoming this director and becoming this, this new journey I'm going on. She's one of the people that's really helped me navigate it and see how I can do it. Um, but yeah, so, so I'd send her pages weekly and she would give me her notes and um, she was very involved with as well with the screenplay and the edit of the movie. And now since the release, now the release, we're talking about like, you know, PR ideas and marketing. So it's been really cool, been really interesting. So she saw the rough cut when your editor? She saw every rough cut. Oh, she, wow. <laughs> she saw probably like 10 cuts, yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> that's, that's actually a great I'm really idea. really grateful to her, yeah. yeah. To have a coach that's kind of holding you accountable in some way, you know, like a sponsor or something almost, but, yeah. but not maybe in the same vein. But. And she really wants the film to, you know, whilst fame, money, and acclaim are great, I just really want the audience to emotionally connect to the film and come away with something. And that's what we, 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 we really f like fine tune. What is the intention for the audience to come away with? Why should they invest an hour and a half of their life in the, the, the project? So those key questions are things that I think every filmmaker should ask themselves when they're making a film or a show. You know, why is the audience watching it? Well, sure, and I think what I came away with is about trust, and it's not just about trusting um, someone else to help you, about trusting yourself, as new age as that sounds, but, you know, because there are moments where Declan asks a lot from these participants, and, and they trust in him, and then I think trusting in yourself was probably the biggest lesson. And, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad you got that. Yeah. And stripping yeah. away the mask and the onion and getting to the core of you is actually where healing can begin. Right, I, I like the one character, forgive me, um, his name wasn't Mark, was it? It was the one that who was taking care of his mother. Mark, yeah. Okay, Mark. Um, Tommy Dorfman. 
Yeah, I liked him because, you know, he was so quiet and you knew there was something very deep brewing and he was kind of off to the side a lot of the time. I know the main character was too, but he, he wouldn't let people in. And, and I think there was something very interesting. You knew that there was a lot of some deep waters in there, I guess, for lack of a better term. I'm glad that you saw that. Yeah, it's not what he's saying. It's how you're seeing. It's show, not tell. So that was kind of the goal with Mark. So I'm glad you felt that. Thank you.